Hello everyone and welcome back. So now that we've got some gamepad navigation set up, let's go through how we can get our character to start drawing and sheathing her weapon. So we won't get the actual weapon implemented in this video, but we'll get the animations and functionality in place so that she can. So in your animations folder, you'll want to go import whatever animations you're needing. I'm using the Akai character files from the game jolt and I've imported all the ones from the combat folder. I was going to do that on camera but it takes way too long so you just find the animations you want, select them, open, uh, and then select the skeleton. I can't apparently. but Once they're in we will go find the withdrawing sword animation, right click it and we can create an anim montage. So I'll scroll down so you can see what I'm typing. So this is draw sword underscore MT. And then we need the sheathing sword. So right click, create, and a montage. Sheath sword underscore MT. All right, and then in our project settings, edit project settings, we need an input event. So I'm going to add an action mapping, and this is going to be draw sheath weapon. And for this on the keyboard, I'm using the Q key, and I'm going to add another action mapping button. And for the gamepad, I'm going to use D-pad left. So I know we're using D-pad left here for the menu navigation, but since we're doing this when the menu is open and we're only going to be able to do this when the menu is closed, they shouldn't really affect each other. So with all that done, let's go into our player base and find some empty space. All right, I'm going to go over here and find my draw sheath weapon action event. So when we press this button, we want to make sure that our menu is not open. So we're going to need a branch. And then we also want to see if our character is currently changing equipment. So we're going to add a boolean called B changing equipment. And it'll be a boolean. We'll grab that one out and get it, and we're going to do an OR here, because we want to see if either one of these is true. Because if one of them's true, but the other one's not, we still want it to deny. So if these are both false, then we want to set changing equipment to true. And then we are going to play anim montage. And you want this one right here with the gray block thing on it. We'll hook it right there. And the way these montages work is we'll hook in a skeletal mesh component that we want to play the montage. And then we'll hook in a montage to play. Now, in order to figure out which one we want it to play, we're going to add one more Boolean called B weapon drawn. From this montage we'll do a select and we will hook in that weapon drawn boolean. So if it's not drawn we will draw the sword and if it is drawn we will sheath the weapon. Now as soon as this plays this executable arrow is what happens immediately after it starts playing the montage and then these other ones are based on uh, certain parameters like once the anime montage is completed if it gets interrupted or blends out and then the montages can have notifications and this is when they either begin or end so we'll be using a few of these but for right now we just want to set that our weapon is drawn to the very top one. Oh, but we don't want to just check it we want to do a select on this as well and each time this is called, it's basically going to be a toggle, so we'll hook in our weapon drawn boolean. And if this is true, then it's false. But if this is false, it's now true. So it'll kind of alternate. Then once it's completed, we want to set that our changing equipment is now false, because we're done changing or drawing our sword. So I'll compile that real quick and come on out. And then when I press Q, she pulls her sword out and put it away. If 
if I tap it over and over again, she can't put it away. But the good thing about Anna montages and the way we're setting it up is if I try to draw my sword and jump, it automatically blends. Since we're doing the layered blend on the other ways, we don't have to do all the complicated anim blueprint setups anymore. You can draw your sword in air. We can use this for air combat and all kinds of stuff. So now let's check it on the game pad. Yeah. Sweet. And then just to make sure, yeah, when the menu's open, not doing anything, close the menu. There it goes. Sweet. So let's save everything real quick. Now back in the player base blueprint. I think this one was pretty short. Yeah, let's um let's actually go ahead and do the the, the weapon thing. So I'm gonna be using the Infinity Blade weapons. Now if you remember in our interaction setup, we added a structure reference and I forgot to add a actor reference but we can actually use this to make it work so let's find our base structure and we're gonna create a child blueprint class of it that will be our base weapon structure underscore VP so we'll double click and open that up and in the construction script we'll get rid of the parent construction script and then in here we'll get well, we'll get rid of basically everything. So I am going to add to the base weapon structure a skeletal mesh because the Infinity Blade assets use skeletal meshes for the weapons. I'm going to call it weapon. So if you're using a different pack and they're actually static meshes, then you want to add a static mesh here. Compile this real quick. And for testing, I'm actually going to be using a hatchet. So let's take a look at it. Not that hatchet though. Yeah. Doesn't really matter what you set in here right now, but I'm just doing this right now. So under the variables, we're going to add weapon info. And that will be an item info type. We'll compile that. And then the construction script We'll do just like we did on the base interactable, so we'll get our weapon info and break it open. From the item ID, we're going to do an enum to string. We will get data table row, the bottom one. Plug this into the construction script. Select our item data table and then plug that string into the name. Then once we're done with that, we can drag out our weapon info and drop it on the out row right here, and it will automatically connect on both sides. So now that's done, I'm going to right click and create a child of that one that is rusted sword underscore BP. So I put an axe here, and rusted sword was from the first one. We'll just we'll just call it hatchet. Hatchet underscore BP. And then we'll do the uh, the sword next time. So one thing to note is that this axe is pretty big. Because it's not actually for this character, it's for one of the enemies. But we can use it anyway. We'll just have to go in and scale it down a little bit. So I did this earlier and it seems like 0.75 was a good scale for it just like that. So now if we go into our player base the mesh and go to her skeleton by double clicking on the skeletal mesh we wait for it to load don't crash Please don't crash. Ah, okay. We can go into her skeleton right here. Find her right hand. And we will add a socket. 
to right click add socket this will be the F2 to rename it weapon socket now if we go to preview scene settings we can get the animation preview controller and change it to use specific animation and I'm going to use the let's see sword and shield idol so I can kind of line up where this sword where this axe needs to go so in the weapon socket add a preview asset add preview asset and I'm going to use the blade 10 for it you can use the hatchet if you want to but they're all basically the same since they're all part of the same pack it doesn't really matter I just like the way this one looks in here <laughs> so with the weapon socket selected I'm just gonna drag it in place clicking this little thing will let you rotate it a little bit easier and I'm gonna line the blade up to face the knuckles roughly roughly this point is what I want lined up on my blade and then I'm gonna drag this down and just kinda position it as needed since the end of the sword will have a little bit more weight it'll tilt a little bit further than the bottom portion kinda rests in the hand like this roughly let's see maybe up a little bit and then forward just a little bit more and then back just wherever you find that looks really good that's looking good enough for now I think I actually might have tilted it too much but I'm not gonna get on there right now so now we have our weapon socket let's go into our base player We'll add a function called draw weapon and one more called destroy weapon let's rename the draw weapon to draw melee weapon that way it's easier later on so now we need some actual item info to tell it what weapon we're going to want it to draw so let's add a variable for our weapon info that is an item info type compile real quick so we can edit it and just to, for now our structure reference I'm gonna get that hatchet so when we draw the melee weapon we want to spawn actor from class the class will be the structure reference that we set up right here so I'm gonna get my weapon info and break it open and then structure reference here and then for the spawn transform we want to get socket transform of our mesh so you can drag out a mesh and then get socket transform or just type in get socket transform and then it's this bottom one right here so we'll plug in the spawn transform and then we'll put in our socket name right here so I named it weapon socket and then for the transform space we want it relative to scale actor I'm pretty sure that's for uh, oh relative transform space okay so that's what that means I thought it meant relative to scale so it's relative to something relative transform state space of the actor after we spawn it we will promote this to a variable called melee weapon reference or ref and now we are going to attach actor to component we want to attach this to our character's skeletal mesh at the socket that we spawned it at so get out of here weapon socket and for the location rotation and scale we will actually on scale since we have some of them changed we'll leave that so keep relative So now we need to actually call this draw weapon function and we can do that in our draw sword montage. So let's find it, open it up, and here is how you can actually add an anim montage notify. <coughs> they work similar to anim notifies in the blueprint. So you line up where you want the anim montage to play, or the, the notify to play, and then under notifies, right click add notify it's not under skeleton notifies or new notify but right here in this little drop down there's a montage notify 
and then we can add that right there. Now for the montage, you click this little pink tag and it'll open up a lot of details for it. What we need is a notify name. So we're going to call this draw weapon, or you can just call it draw. You know what, draw works, D-R-A-W. And then when that one plays, well, let's go ahead and set up. So on the sheath sword, we'll add one more notify. This one will be the destroy, so we'll add it right about there, looks good. Right click to add a notify of the montage variety. Click the pink tag, this is destroy. Then in the player base, we can get off this notify name right here. We can call a switch on name. Plug it into the on notify begin. And clicking this, we can add some pin names to it. I'm going to get rid of the default pin though, we don't need it. So for the first one, it is our draw. And then the second one is destroy. Doesn't particularly matter the order, I just do it that way. So we'll call our draw, <laughs> draw weapon here and destroy weapon here. So let's open up the destroy weapon real quick, get our melee weapon reference, and if we right click and convert it to a validated get, we can save us a little bit of hassle. So if it is valid, then we want to destroy the actor. So let's take a look. Just like that. Now we got a hatchet we can run around with and we'll start working on. This isn't going to be the weapon. This is going to be the tool later on so we can run around and chop trees or break rocks or whatever we need to do in order to start crafting our settlement. But we can do the same thing with uh, our swords and everything. So I will see you all in the next one to start working on some more functionality. Bye.